organising a conference in Scotland in 2007 for DebConf. We have a conference every year, and um, on IRC uh, in the January, this in the summer, in January, I said um, IRC. If we had a tartan, I would wear a kilt for the whole conference, and everybody replied, "Well, make a tartan then." So uh, I thought. You can't just make up a, a tartan, choose a few colours and say this is the Debian tartan, there must be some sort of reason for it. And uh, I, I thought about different ways of somehow using the tartan technique for doing something like a barcode that said Debian or um, ASCII uh, encoded in binary somehow. Or so if you uh, want to focus on this bit, uh, this the white stripes, dash dot dot is D. Okay. Dot is E, dash dot 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 is B, dot dot is I, dot dash is A, dash dot is N. So uh, I, I went to a, uh, there are websites where you can design tartans and I selected it and messed around for a, a couple of hours with different colours and then I got in touch with a professional tartan designer and said I have these ideas and he didn't really change very much, he just moved the blue and made it, uh, this this tartan is unusual because it's only symmetrical this way. Mm -hmm. So this is not a, a, a line of symmetry because this corner and that corner are different. So there are only about five other tartans like that. And uh, so I wouldn't have thought of that because uh, so that was uh, done. And then I asked people whether they were interested and we got about uh, 18 people, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we ordered the tartan and I spent a lot of money on it and I hadn't seen a sample and I'd spent all these other people's money so when it turned up and I liked it it was a, a big relief mm -hmm. uh, and now we've that was uh, I think we had 80 yards of material made that time mm -hmm. and no, no, 140 yards of material made that time and then we've had another batch done where we ordered 80 and for some reason the weavers made 160 so we still have stock as well so if, if people are interested in getting a, a kilt at the moment they can just go and buy one they don't have to wait for new cloth to be woven and uh, so the the pattern is called uh, a set the, the the name for the, the order of the threads is uh, set S-E-T-T -T. And the set for this is effectively the source code, so it's GPL'd. If you can think of another way of using it, uh, if you want to weave it in bamboo thread as ties or something, you're perfectly welcome to do it. Um, uh, what else? Oh, the colours, we have the, the two shades of red, uh, so that this shade is very close to the, uh, the Debian swirl. The black, white and yellow are meant to represent tux. <laughs> uh, and the blue is electric blue which is just there because I like blue, really. Okay. <laughs> Current stock is with a, a weavers called Jeffrey Taylor's in Edinburgh. Uh, if you go to the DebConf 7 wiki page, or if you just look for uh, Debian Tartan, it should uh, reference that. Okay. Or go to an old, uh, old entries on my blog, which is blog.hands.com you'll find uh, a reference to the wiki page on DebConf 7. Mm -hmm. There, there's all the contact details and information about it. Uh, or if if not, they can always email me if, if they have any problems talking to the tailors. Mm -hmm. Because the tailors, for some reason, think that uh, I'm proprietorial about mm -hmm. uh, the thing and want to get permission to, to give the tartan to people. But I'm happy for anybody to have it. Yeah. The more the merrier. The more people that order it, the more likely they are to just decide to keep it in stock. So you can uh, you, you can order the plain cloth as well and do it. So people have made trousers out of it and uh, people make uh, self-done skirts and various other things. The thing is, it's uh, a silly idea, and and it's quite expensive, so yeah. you have to be a little bit into Debian. Yeah. So I think our of us doesn't think Debian is free enough, because we still have the non-free mm -hmm. uh, repositories on our servers. Mm -hmm. So he thinks we should uh, have a non-free.org or something, mm -hmm. and sep separately hosted. But it's just too much of a pain in the ass to do that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's a slight difference of opinion. But I don't think it's a big deal though. Uh -huh.
it's it's really appropriate for Debian to have a Tartan, I think, because we're a bit like a clan. Mm -hmm. And yep. people have loyalty that's beyond reason to Debian. Yeah. So, uh, the, you know, some, some people have tattooed the, this world on themselves. So, <laughs> this isn't something that uh, is normal for uh, programming projects, I think. Yeah. So that, uh, it's uh, and it's great. You yeah. turn up in different places around the world, and a load of idiots are wearing kilts. And so you have ten people walking down the street in Argentina in kilts, and all the locals are sort of, "Oh my god, <laughs> 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 what is happening?" The the thing is that uh, Ubuntu is aiming at a much smaller target, so you can have a graphical uh, install, which targets uh, laptops and which is uh, pretty much what uh, the initial focus of Ubuntu was but that installer doesn't work on a S390 or an ARM box with no uh, display because you need something that does serial for that so the Debian installer is perhaps a bit more basic in the user interface that it shows you unless I mean it does do a graphical one as well but it works on uh, every architecture we support. And there's really not that much point making that different because you don't install things very often. Mm -hmm. And with Debian, because it's upgradable, people install uh, on average sort of less than one once per computer mm -hmm. because people will do things like take a disk out of an old computer and put it in a new computer. So if you're only doing it you know, once every six months or once a year, uh, uh, even if you've got loads of computers, then it doesn't really matter. It's mm -hmm. uh, five minutes of your life. Mm -hmm. And that's the sort of thing that people go, oh, isn't it lovely that they've got a graphical user interface? Well, the graphical user interface, you you barely look at it, mm -hmm. and it only works on two architectures. So it's no good to Debian, really. Mm. That's, I think that's a misperception. Mm -hmm. The problem is that we call testing testing. And for most people that want up-to-date stuff, you can just run testing and it'll be fine. If you want something that's really stable, then stable is good, but uh, you have the problem of it gets out of date. But we have backports as well, so you can have your system entirely running stable, but better if someone has felt the need to backport a recent version of something to the stable mm -hmm. then you've got a really solid uh, uh, system and you can take one or two packages that you think you need the latest version of and add that and that's great I think I don't see what the problem is it's just it's mostly a problem of people not realizing that so people go oh yeah Debian's always out of date mm -hmm. that's not true at all mm -hmm. uh, it's just gives you about six different choices from really stable really stable plus a few bits which will still be stable because you haven't changed the libraries or anything. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go for testing, which is only two weeks behind the, the latest uploads. Mm -hmm. Unstable if you don't care about uh, the fact that every now and again you won't be able to log in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, you can do sort of mixtures of those things. That, so you can tune it to exactly your needs. But it doesn't make it, uh, it doesn't give it to you on a, a platter okay. necessarily. I, I think, I mean, I, use, I think Ubuntu's done really good things for making it more usable for normal users. Because, like for instance, when Ubuntu did the, uh, the thing that suggests that you've got things to upgrade mm -hmm. in the status bar, I would never have, I would never have thought of that. Because I know that you just do apt get dist upgrade, and I do it occasionally. Mm -hmm. but. I gave a copy of Ubuntu to my gardener and he saw this thing drop down and clicked it and upgraded things and all of a sudden he was uh, saying, it's fantastic, I'm in charge of this machine and I just upgraded it and I'm maintaining it uh -huh. and I felt really empowered by that. Mm -hmm. So little features like that mm -hmm. are things that a uh, Debian developer would never bother with mm -hmm. because you don't need, you know, if you already know how to do it, you don't need something to remind you to do yeah, it necessarily. Yeah. Oh, 
And I think, uh, well, for starters, they're employing a load of Debian de developers, so that's Debian developers who can now eat. So they, <laughs> they program better when they can eat. Uh, the people that are Debian developers that are working for Ubuntu do the uh, their maintenance in parallel. Okay. So the, the, for, the, for those instances, there's definitely no problem with communication between the developers because it's the same person. There was a bit of an issue at the start about communication. I think it's mostly solved now. Uh, more time being spent on free software is good for free software. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't really matter. I, I, partic I personally don't like uh, Launchpad very much because I can never find anything in it. Mm -hmm. so, but uh, for things that are bugs in both, they get put into the Debian bug tracking system as well. And Launchpad does seem to be able to tie the, the bugs together to make sure that the communication is uh, working okay. Mm -hmm.